What we're talking about a proper workstation that you might need for your AI or anything similar that you're working with video or photo in extreme editions. This build might be it because this right here is quite an insane configuration with a Threadripper AI Pro GPU and quite loads of RAM. So let's deep dive into the specifications first because after that we're going through benchmarks and I'm gonna give you some numbers even though I can't compare much since I never had such strong uh, CPU and GPU combination in terms of the workstation. So let's start. We're having here AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 9975WX which comes with 32 cores, 64 threads, 4 gigahertz clock speed. After that, we have Kingston Fury Renegade Pro DDR5 RDIM. These are 8 times 32 gigs, that's 256 gigs, at 6000 megahertz. Right after that, Kingston Fury Renegade G5 2 terabytes, Sapphire AMD Radeon AI Pro R9732 gigs, and uh, then we have the motherboard, which basically is quite logical. Asus uh, Pro WS WRX 90E Sage SC. Powering everything up is uh, Asus ROG Strix uh, 1200 uh, watts platinum. Cooling down the CPU is Silverstone XC 360 TR5 and everything packed in Fractal North XL. Um, I tried to build it uh, in the same way that I do with all the other builds, uh, keeping it nice and tidy, but regarding the specifications, I think this is quite an insane workstation. Now, I did say that my workstation at the back is somehow alright, but uh, it's been three to four years that I changed my PC and I think it's time to do that as well, but not with this, uh, sadly because uh, yeah unfortunately this does cost quite a lot and this is why I couldn't compare because my workstation is completely different than this one and this one actually brings something quite interesting to the table. So without further ado I'm gonna go through the details, I'm gonna give you the benchmarks in, the, in that sense and why is this so good. Now, since we have the Threadripper Pro here and the difference that you can see in raw performance is in dual quad and octa channel regime of uh, benchmarking and work. So this will depend on the uh, slot usage of the memory kits. But in general, uh, what you can expect here is quite high performance and uh, definitely doing uh, demanding tasks quite easily. So let's start with my regular benchmarks. What I do, I the 64 Extreme Edition System Stability Test. This is something that I wanted to test out just to see the thermals first and foremost. So uh, CPU went up to 79 degrees and the clock speed went up to 5060 megahertz. While the GPU, because it's a blower card and this basically doesn't go even that high, 64 degrees. Now we're having three stock fans at the front coming with Fractal North, so yeah, take that into consideration as well. Cache and memory benchmark, read speeds 243.54 gigabytes per second, write speeds 273.18 gigabytes per second, copies 244.73 gigabytes per second, and latency, which is quite logical, 110.8 nanoseconds. Now, here we go with something interesting. These are the benchmarks that you can see the difference. AIDA AES-256, 1,379,709 megabytes per second. This is by far the highest score that you can expect uh, in terms of my benchmarks. Now, we're going with Cinebench R23 and R24. Cinebench R23, 10 average runs. We're having average thermals out of those 10 runs, 68.6 degrees. Clock speed is 4966 and check this out. The score is 73092. This is average. Then we go with 10 minute throttle test. CPU went up to 72 degrees on average. Clock speed is 4940 MHz. Passes, listen to this. 56 passes with a score 72781. Outstanding. Cinebench R24, again we have 10 runs and the average of the thermals is 70.4. 5311 uh, clock speed and uh, 3903 Cinebench score. In 10 minute throttle test for the Cinebench R24, we're having CPU at 71 degrees, clock speed is 5265 MHz, 9 passes, and 3889 uh, is the score for the Cinebench R24. 
So you can see the, the difference comparing it to my past benchmarks. Now Corona 10, 68 degrees, we're having 26.9 million rays per second. In Corona 1.3, again 68 degrees, 90 seconds to finish the render. This is definitely the best score because I think the best score was 31 or 35 three something like that seconds to finish the render and 25.4 million rays per second outstanding indigo benchmark uh, we're having for the md thread reaper pro 70 degrees uh, we're having a bedroom 9.890 million samples per second while the supercar is 22.429 million samples per second the gpu radian ai pro r9700 uh, goes at 68 degrees with the bedroom score 20,574,000, supercar is 55,876,000 samples per second. I don't have to discuss anything with those benchmarks, it's quite obvious. And then we go with Geekbench 6, a single thread score for the CPU is 3,209, multi-thread score is 29,629, uh, GPU 164,000, 570. This is the OpenCL score. So just to give you an idea, Jetstream 330,165. Then we go with Blender. Two minutes and 21.88 seconds to finish the render. For the cube in Blender 4.5.4, uh, this is a bit strange, but since it's a regular shape, just a cube, uh, 5.38 seconds to finish the render. Then for the benchmarks that I don't usually do, we're having a Muse uh, version 3.1, image count uh, I placed 10, performance was uh, quality, and the time to finish rendering those 10 images, 136.6 seconds, with uh, performance at 3.09. Uh, this was Raccoon playing the guitar. Now for the video count, I uh, has placed a monkey eating a banana. 10 videos, performance is set on quality, video length 6 seconds, coherency fix was at high as well as the volatility. Time was 1668.4 seconds to finish it with performance 0.83. Then we go with Povray. Uh, kernel was uh, 0 0.25 seconds, user was 579.34 seconds, and the total was 579.59 seconds. Ellipse time, 11.69 seconds, with render average was uh, 21,920.23 PPS, over 262,144 PIX. And uh, basically, when we go with the uh, spec view performance uh, on version 15, GPU temperature was somewhere around 59 to 66, on, which was average 62 and a half. And then you can see the scores. Now, sadly, with the spec view performance and spec uh, workstation, I don't have anything to compare it with. So I'm just going to give you the scores that I got with this configuration. And maybe you can compare it to yours if you have this type of uh, configuration, workstation or anything similar to that. So you can check out that because, well, basically, it's uh, much easier to do that than just go through all the benchmarks and just talk numbers if i can't compare anything uh, as i said the spec workstation 4.0 uh, 62 degrees on the gpu and that's basically it in general this type of build it's definitely not for everybody and i know you guys that regularly watch my uh, standard reviews of builds that are more affordable than this uh, you're not going to even consider going with this but this is definitely something for professional users that need well basically ai rendering photos videos or doing your own renders of photos and videos just simply uh, destroys in terms not destroys actually but uh, does the job quite nicely in terms of doing the job quickly and efficiently. Uh, when we're talking about this board, since this is a specific board for this processor, you're having loads of connections. So you do need to take into consideration to buy a proper power supply if you're into going with a workstation such as this, because you need two EPS cables that are connected at the top and you have more additional EPS cable for a second power supply if that is needed. And of course you have 24 pin on the side and two additional PCIe 8-pin cables that need to be connected, one above and one beneath the 24-pin cable. That's basically it. Everything else is standard regular. And of course, you do need to take into consideration to buy a case that fits this type of motherboard. 
everything else is straightforward. So yeah, a completely different video than you're used to on the channel, which I actually had one Thread Reaper quite some time ago. I think it was two or three years ago. But that case and that build was completely obscene because I didn't expect it to arrive in such huge chassis and everything all together, which was really uh, not uncomfortable, but just simply unnecessary. Since this runs quite nice and cool. And yeah, that's basically it. If you're thinking about the AAO and the tubes going here at the back, I just wanted to go with a proper configuration in terms of the cable of the pump is going here on the radiator on the side. If I switch it on the other side, Silverstone uh, AAO doesn't have the opening for the cable on the side, so I'll most likely crush it while tying up the screws at the top. So yeah, this is how it uh, has to go. And honestly, I think if we if it was on the other side, I think it would be too much bends on the tube uh, because there is a certain locking mechanism for the thread ripper and the uh, cold plate uh, to be mounted at. That'll be it. Uh, just in case, I'll place the links in the description below so you can check out uh, the prices and to see maybe some other information details. And that'll be all for today, guys. This was definitely something out of the ordinary from the channel and here uh, to check out the benchmarks and I don't know what else to say. But yeah, that's it. Guys, the links are in the description if you're new to the channel. And if you're not used to this type of content, we're going back with uh, regular reviews built and uh, one custom build coming by the end of the month. So guys, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.